when I get to the flying field and want to fly my kite, I want the kite to be tuned at least partially. I want it to be able to fly when I get there. I don't want to have to start from scratch and adjust and tune the kite while I'm on the flying field. I'd rather have the kite ready to go so that when I attach it to my flying line, I know that it will at least fly and that based on the wind conditions, I'll need to adjust it a little bit, but I won't have to start from ground zero. So before I go to the flying field, when I'm at home on my workbench, I pre-adjust or pre-tune each kite. It's very simple, takes very little time. Now this kite is a diamond shaped North American fighter kite that has a three point bridle. And I prefer these bridles because they allow such a wide range of adjustment. Uh, and that seems to help with uh, every aspect of flying the kite. At the nose, there are two connections right on the bow, about an inch and a quarter away from the spine on each side. And they are connected by a yoke. And that yoke is then connected to the main bridle line. And then a toe point is added to the main bridle line. So this is the bridle. And on all my kites, all my North American fighter kites, I use a three-point bridle. I've tried others and they work too, but uh, this I prefer. So I make the adjustment so that the kite, when I lift it by the toe point of the bridle, is sitting so that it's relatively parallel to the floor. Now, in this case, the nose is pointed upward, which is what I have all already adjusted it for, because I, that's how it has to be when you go to the flying field. If I slide the toe point down towards the tail a little bit, it won't be that way. It'll pick the tail up instead. So. The adjustment here is to slide the toe point up or down on the main bridle line until you get the point where the nose raises above the flat surface your, of your workbench or table about three quarters of an inch before the tail begins to lift off. That's just about right. Now, if the kite <clears throat> were not uh, parallel to the floor, I would adjust it here. I would move this point here along this yoke line until I got it to be parallel to the floor when I held it by the toe point. The other thing I need to do is to put a bend into the spine. I put the bend between where the wingtip line runs across and meets with the spine here. From there to the nose, I create a small bend. This is a bamboo spine and to bend it, I simply have to use the warmth of my hand and just slightly bend it and it will hold its shape pretty well. So when it's flying, when it's flat on a work surface, when the tail section is held down, I want the nose to be above that work surface about three quarters of an inch. 
or thereabouts, it isn't critical, but some amount. If that happens and I have the bridle adjusted correctly, this kite's ready to fly. And when I get to the flying field, I know it will fly well, right out of the bag. And I will adjust it, but only for the conditions of the wind. Now this is a, a different kite, <clears throat> and it uses a different kind of a spine. Instead of all bamboo, it's a partial bamboo and partial carbon fiber. And because it's got carbon fiber as the area between the wingtip line and the nose, I attached an adjustment line, a tension line, which I think you can see here, I don't know, that allows me to put a bend into the carbon fiber so it will stay. And I do the same thing. I make that bend with a tension line using, I use a, a, a pot line hitch to allow it to adjust, works pretty good holding the back part of the spine against my work surface, I want the nose of the kite to be about three quarters of an inch above the work surface. <coughs> and in terms of the bridle, it's exactly the same kind of a arrangement as the other kite. I adjust it so that it's parallel to the floor, and that the nose raises off the work surface about three quarters of an inch before the tail lifts off when I gently lift it off of the work surface. And that kite will be ready to fly when I get to the flying field. Now, this is a buka. This is a rectangular kite and its adjustments are on the bridle identical to the diamond-shaped kites, except that with a buka, you want the nose to come off of the work surface about an inch or an inch and a half before the tail lifts off. But you do want the leading edge to be parallel with the floor when you do that. If it is not parallel to the floor, you need to adjust it right here and move this uh, lark's head knot one direction or another in order to get it to be parallel to the floor. But a buka requires that it be tensioned unlike a diamond-shaped kite, a buka has a tension line on the back of the kite. And again, on this, I don't know if you can see that tension line. And it's pretty hard to see. It's right here. And it's a line going from wing tip to wing tip on the leading edge spar. And I tension it before I fly it so that I can put approximately three stacked fingers between the kite and the tension line here. It's not exact, doesn't have to be exact, but that will give you a position and a tuning for the kite that when you get to the flying field, it's ready to fly. Now, if you have a square kite, it's exactly the same as in terms of tuning and pre-tuning, it's exactly the same as a rectangular kite. They have a tension line and they have to be adjusted on the bridle in the same way. So I hope this helps you in getting
your kite's ready to fly before you get to the flying field and give you a little more time to fly and a little less time to fuss around tuning the kites.